Thank you for calling me. I knew you will. It has to be that way when you know something. When you hope it, there's scattered vibration. When you believe it, there's sometimes a little resistance. When you know something, there's no scattering your vibration. It makes you very compelling. Yes, yes, yes. I was looking for you all my life. And finding us all your life. In other words, coming in different ways, but always coming. Yeah, I was raised Muslim and two and a half years ago, I had a conversation with you. I said, I need to meet you. And when I, wherever, cut a long story short, when I heard Esther, maybe a few months ago, I knew, I knew it was you. And I met you May 9th in Philadelphia. And, and then very strange events two days ago, I had a very important meeting in Indiana. Last minute got canceled. Yeah. I was going to go to Chattanooga. And I heard you saying, come to San Francisco, and here I am. It's very strange. It's actually normal. <laughs> the sequence of events that feel like circumstance, sometimes feels like chance or happenstance, feels like coincidence. Coincidence in the way we mean it is incidences that are coinciding. Law of Attraction provides those. But so many convergences and once you get in this stream where as you say you know it then life is so delicious as you watch the details of this non-physical assistance coming into place no. we want to tell you just a brief story about that and we will hear you fully in Esther's new house there are some shelves and she is putting some book collections that she's gathered for a while. And many years ago, Jerry and Esther met a woman in Tucson who had a collection of Mark Twain books. He'd written far more than Huckleberry Finn and Tom Sawyer. And his books are compelling. Jerry and Esther, as they read them, could feel the Abrahamic harmony of what he was writing about and so they were allowed these books were very valuable and signed by Mark Twain and so every week they brought another one home and then the next week they would drive across town and exchange it for another one and they made their way in 1982 and 3 and 4 and 5 through this collection of books and Esther always said one day I will own a collection like that and so the other morning she woke up and in her mind was Mark Twain. Just in her mind, first thing when she woke up. So she went to the internet, made a few keystrokes and found the full collection on eBay. Pushed the button and ordered it. And then Esther and her friend went to lunch. And while they were at lunch, Esther thought about this antique store that is around the corner where she had ordered a lamp that she hadn't picked up yet. And she thought, well, let's go and see if the lamp is ready. And she walked in, and in this collection of books that Jerry and Esther had read, the one that stood out the most was Recollections of Joan of Arc. Mark Twain had gone to France and had researched the archives and had written what Jerry and Esther believed to be a very authentic rendition of what took place. And it had been the most moving, touching thing that they'd ever read, with Joan of Arc doing the same thing that Esther is doing. The vibrational frequency felt exactly the same. It felt so family familiar. And so now Esther is in this antique store that's several floors and several rooms. And she walked in and in and in and in and stopped in front of a statue, a bronze, of Joan of Arc. And she thought, oh, <laughs> must have this. And she put it in the hands of the shop owner who was following her around. And she said, I'll take that. And he said, do you want to look around? And Esther said, no, I came for that. Well, she didn't know she'd come for that. But when she saw it, she knew she'd come for that. The night before, the gardener was looking up at the house that's being painted and a new piece of iron has been painted on the top and he said that looks like a Esther thought he said the word bull 
And she looked up and she said, oh yeah, I can kind of see that. Didn't look anything like a bull to Esther. And then they went in the house and they were sitting and having some water. And he pointed at a lamp that Esther has that is an owl. Esther likes owls because they are like Solomon, the giant owl on Zachary's trail from the book series that she received. And so he said this word again, wool, as he points at this. And Esther says, oh, owl, that's what you're talking about. So then they went back out. She said, yes, yes, it is. I haven't noticed it before, but it definitely is that. And now standing the next day in the antique store, she is told that the man who sculpted this piece, his last name is same as the word bull, owl in Spanish. And Esther is thinking, you guys are good. <laughs> in other words, it's like a never ending treasure hunt. It's a never ending being led to one delightful, what you want to call coincidences, but clearly are not all day, every day. Every one of us knowing every one of you, knowing what you want and where you are in relationship to what you want. And the more open you are, then the more finely tuned these fun things can occur so that you can begin to first understand that we are all in this together. Next, let's state it more bluntly. You are never on your own. Next, state it even more bluntly. It matters what you want and all of us care about what you want and all of us are helping you to get what you want. But you got to get yourself in a happy place somehow, 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 so that you can receive the impulse when you wake up in the thoughts in your head do something about it when you get a feeling to go eat there go eat there which will remind you to go over there and look for something that wasn't ready yet but you'll find something that you really really want you see you're always being led to what you want even if you are not consciously actively aware of what it is right now this red hot minute because you've been putting what you want into your vortex incrementally piece by piece by piece by piece by piece and that vortex has been gathering law of attraction has been assimilating all of the cooperative components are gathered and it's ready to burst forth in so much abundance and awareness and pleasing experiences for you that's how this vibrational reality is turning to the things reality that's how the idea the idea that esther has had for a very long time finally she's in a place where she has a shelf where she wants those books in other words, finally, she's at a place where she wants to read them again. Finally, she's at a place. In other words, all of the convergence of all of the things are happening. And the source within you knows the timing, knows the rightness, knows the place, knows where you are in relationship to it, and is constantly giving you feedback. And the more on point you are, the more on tune you are, the more receptive you are, the more in the receptive mode you are, the more consistently receptive you are, then the more delicious your life is moment by moment by moment by moment. You then and only then really begin to be this extension of source energy here living the way you've intended to live, not in struggle, but in constant satisfaction of the things that your life has helped you to identify are important to you, you see. And along with that comes this uncondition, which is what an emotion is. It's the turning the thought to the thing before it's really a thing turning the thought to a feeling before the feeling becomes the condition. It's that uncondition, that emotion of worthiness that then just washes over you. You just have to feel the importance that you are to source. You just have to know if things that on the human scale of events could be that insignificant, matters that much that source is guiding you step by step impulse by impulse you have to know how important you are to source yeah and so can i ask my question yeah all my life i would say it doesn't matter what faith you are if you look at a person and you don't see god and then check your faith but my question is two months ago i came here for a retreat i'm a survivor of incest i'm a child psychiatrist and i came here with my college friends, they're all physician and like I'm 48 now and I fell in love with one of my college mates and we had this relationship but two months ago he broke up with me here. We were here for two days and so that's what happened and back and forth in last two days or last week what happened, the way events happened. I'm very busy and there was no chance that I 
could come here. So this two days cocoon where nobody except for a friend of mine knows that I'm here because my phone would never stop. People would be looking where I went. I'm driving my car and I'm saying I'm going to Tennessee. A truck in front of me says Tennessee and I started paying attention. And I'm thinking it's happening, but your voice, I'm always listening. You started saying something which only me and my daughter would talk. And then you said, don't go there and your lover will come to you. A truck came by side, it says Chattanooga, Tennessee, and it goes and the number plate says doctor is out. I'm just going crazy. <laughs> I go home and, and I say, okay, I'm not going there, I guess. And then I'm driving to my work next day and everything started saying Saturday, 25th, Saturday, 25th, I say, okay, I'll only go there if I clearly say, see somewhere San Francisco Bay Area. And my phone rings and it says San Francisco Bay Area. <laughs> and a travel agent says, are you looking for business class tickets to travel to? So, I mean, no travel agents don't usually call these days. <laughs> so, sometimes you're denser than others. Sometimes you get it on the first hint. Sometimes you get it on the second hint. Some people but, never get it at all. Well, I'm, I'm already sold because I know you who are. So I called my assistant. I said, okay, buy me that seminar and book the hotel. And I didn't know where the seminar was. I didn't know where the seminar was. So I come here and that's when I looked and I checked in. And, then, and as I'm walking in and I'm realizing this is the hotel. And I checked into the room and it was the same room where I was staying. This is better than, maybe I'm too thick. Maybe my IQ is 50, I don't know. I'm board certified <laughs> physician. But my question is, I'm very happy. Other than, I know this person, I'm in love with him. I get everything. It's all physical and we're non-physical and I'm fully satisfied. I come from a third world country going to, you know, I achieved everything and I want no more, but I want everything. I get all of that. But now what? is my question. Here I am, you called me, <laughs> on the phone. That actually is not true. We answered you, you called us. True, true, I did, two and a half years. In other words, it's, it's in your vortex, too. it's your vortex that's being satisfied, not ours. True, there's so much more to it. I woke up and there's a humming, like this is crazy stuff. This is science fiction, I don't know what it is. This is universal response to powerful desire and everything that unfolds is the explanation of what your habit of vibration is in relationship to what your vibration of desire is as life starts unfolding in these ways that you don't miss and you start acknowledging the assistance isn't the right word because you don't need help the cooperation of the universe in response to the dominance of what's going on within you. We've been talking about step one being life causing you to ask and step two being the vortex gathering your source standing there in a vibrational reality with everything that you've asked for having come in a vibrational reality. And step three is you being aware that you've got to be in the vibrational vicinity of that. You've got to be a vibrational match to that in order to begin realizing because the revelation is being broadcast to you constantly. But for you to realize it, you've got to be in a vibrational vicinity of the broadcast that's coming back from your vortex. So once you get good at that, once you decide that you care about how you feel, so that feeling good is really a dominant intention within you. And when you go to bed at night, you say, tonight while I sleep, the momentum is going to subside. And when I awaken in the morning, I can begin it again in the vibrational vicinity of that which I desire. And you consistently are holding yourself in a place of predominantly feeling good. Now we describe you as step four living where you are knowing that you want to feel good and you mostly are, and you know, you want to feel good and you mostly are. Nothing is better than to be incomplete and you are eternally incomplete. We all are, you see. If you like this video, don't forget to subscribe and see you in the next